Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see the current affairs of 4th April 2024. So without wasting any time, so let us pick out the articles which are important from our examination point of view. And we are also going to see like dimensions that you have to think from that article point of view. And we have to see like how can we connect a single topic with the different subjects. So if you are doing this exercise then that will be helpful to improve your thought process. And there will be change in you like how you are seeing that perspective. So this change is very helpful to write any computer examination. And many students who are doing this mistake here is writing title and writing each and every word which is given in this article but it is not at all useful and it is not the way that you have to prepare for any computer examination especially if you want to clear this india's toughest examination that is upsc then this type of approach you have to follow and i am going to teach you like how you have to pick the articles and how you have to think in different dimensions and even how can you connect a single topic with the different subjects clear so if you're watching this analysis of Rathod's IAS Academy so please do watch consistently okay so that within four to five months of time you will be getting change in your thought process okay now let us see the front page so this is front page of Hindu and let us see the important articles so first topic is Supreme Court to list before polls Please to verify count in all EVMs. So what is the keyword? The keyword here is EVM. So what is this EVM? That is electronic voting machine. So all of you, you have this right to vote, right? So if you have right to vote here, so you might have cast your vote. So in that voting machines, so you might have press the button. So that is nothing but EVMs. So here, this article is very important because whenever you are seeing elections or electoral reforms or any question regarding EVMs or VV pads, that will be like one of the favorite area of UPSC for both prelims and as well as for mains. So you can expect prelims and mains based question from this topic. So now let us see this topic. First, let us see this infographic and after seeing this infographic, we are going to see the dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view. So VV parts that is voter verifiable paper audit trail is an independent system attached with electronic voting machine that allows voters to verify that their votes are cast or not. Petitioners have moved to top court that is Supreme Court seeking that EC be directed to count all VV plat slips, they also propose simultaneous VV plat verification. And on July 17, 2023, the top court has sought the response on EC on this plea filed by Association for Democratic Reforms, that is ADR. And this one is EC had said counting of 100% VV plat slips would pose a great difficulty due to the amount of time it would take. And next one is court to hear petitions before first phase of elections. So actually what is the issue is, let me take the blank page. So what is the issue here is ADR. Association for Democratic Reforms filed a petition. It filed a petition in Supreme Court. So this petition it is about election commission should count EVM. So whatever the votes which are casted in this EVMs, they need to be tallied with voter verifiable paper audit trails. So what is this? So there will be EVM like this and there will be name and so and so and you will be having a button and you will be pressing that button to cast your vote. So after pressing button, here you can see one big box. So in that box, you will be seeing like a small paper will be coming. On that paper, you will be having the symbol of that political party. 
So how many votes you are casting here in this voting machine? So these many slips they will come and they will fall in this box. So this box is called as this VV patch and this voting machine is called as electronic voting machine. Clear? So here this petition is exactly saying that you have to count the votes which, which are casted in these EVMs and we have to tally with this VV patch in all the centers. But here election commission is saying that so it is like time constraint. So we cannot count all these VV pads. We have time constraint. So there is less amount of time for counting. So we can't go for that. Okay. So this is the thing which mainly said here. So now let us see the dimensions. So this topic is important from this chapter called as elections. And in your Lakshmikant, you will be having number of chapters. Like you will be having this ECI in your constitutional bodies. And you will be having electoral reforms. And you will be having like representation of People's Act of 1950. And 1951, there are separate chapters. So all these are related to this elections itself. And you have to see all these topics from your Lakshmikanth at least twice. And here you have to see like what is this election commission of India and members. So we have like three members. So one will be chief election commissioner and other two will be election commissioners. And this year appointment process is very important. Okay, this year appointment process is very important and we are expecting like the question will come from this appointment of this ACs and chief election commissioner. And you have to see like what, uh, what is the role and functions and you have to see even tenure. Tenure is very important because before completion of tenure, so one election commissioner he resigned. And next one is you have to see what are the reforms we came up in these elections. And you have to see how this election commission of India ensures free and fair elections. So how it is ensuring free and fair elections. So all these are the important dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view. And this article is very important from your GS paper to under polity. So under polity, this article is very important. Clear? We are going to see this article in detail. Don't worry. And even you have to see like some facts regarding EVMs and as well as VV pads. So from this area also there is a chance of getting question. So we are not going to take any chance to miss any point okay and one more thing here is we in Rathod's IS we are providing offline and online foundational course for your prelims come mains 2025 so you know that we started offline branch in Ashok Nagar Hyderabad so we are going to start our new batch from July 2nd week so from July 2nd week onwards, we are going to start new batch for your GS prelims come mains. So the important features of this course is, first one means there is 100% syllabus coverage and especially the special focus on current effects. So beginners, they will be facing lots and lots of problems regarding understanding of current effects. So here we are focusing on current, current effects the most and you will be having daily analysis, you will be having weekly current effects and also weekly magazines, monthly compilations that will be given in this Rathod's IS for these offline students. And next one is, we are also focusing on mains answer writing practice. So on the day one onwards, you will be having this mains answer writing practice. And so after completion of that so and so subject, you will be having prelims test and along with the mains test from the respective subject. And you will be having one-to-one -one mentorship on every Sunday. You will be having mentor calls. You have to sit before mentor so that you can share your problems with mentor. And 
next one here is you will be having prelims test series along with main test series so all these are the important features of this rathod's is prelims come mains foundation and apart from that not only this prelims come mains foundation you will be having extra classes for your mains answer writing practice and especially 5 months before your prelims daily you will be having one hour extra class for your prelims and here you will be having daily test daily test before your prelims 5 months of your prelims so all these are included in this prelims come mains foundation course of offline and the cost here is with option it is around 1,150,000 rupees and if you want only GS it is around 1,20,000 rupees so only few seats are remaining because our batch size is very less so just 70 students per a batch okay so try to reserve your seat because we are providing seats based on first come first serve basis okay so try to come to office and try to book your seat and admissions are going on and if you want to contact us you can call us on this number 8074765513 okay yes now let us move on to our article and let us see the notes part so if you see the context why it is in news supreme court agreed to list ahead of lok sabha election as series of petitions seeking a directive to election commission to mandatorily cross verify the vote count in all evms by counting all vv pad slips so there was like one controversy in 2017 to 2019 that this evms they can be easily hacked okay so because of this now there are number of petitions to file in the supreme court that so whenever we are going for counting of evms we have to go for counting of this vv pad so that we can cross check or cross verify the votes so this is about the petition which filed in supreme court and supreme court is going to deal with this case before the first phase of elections and we have to wait and see what supreme court says okay so now let us see some facts regarding this evms and vv patch so these facts you can expect in your prelims questions so evm it is a device and this device it is used to record votes electronically and these EVMs they were first used in this Parmur assembly in year 1982 and from 1998 onwards election commission of India has increasingly used these EVMs instead of these ballot boxes and in 2003 here all state elections and by elections they were held by using these EVMs and later on in from 2004 onwards commission took a historic decision to use only EVMs for this Lok Sabha elections. So this is about history of use of this EVMs. If you are focusing on the development of these EVMs, so it has been devised and designed by technical experts committee. Okay, so technical experts committee came up with this devising and as well as designing of this EVMs in collaboration with two public sector undertakings. So which are those two public sector undertakings? So first one is Bharat Electronics Limited, Bangalore and next one is Electronic Corporation of India Limited, Hyderabad. So these are the two undertakings, public sector undertakings in collaboration. They came up with this development of EVMs. And if you see the key features of this EVMs, so EVM being used by Election Commission of India. So this Election Commission of India by using this EVMs it can record maximum number of around 2000 votes. So in one EVM they can count 2000 votes. And they do not require electricity. They run an, on an ordinary battery assembled by Bharat Electronics Limited. Okay. So there is no need of requiring of electricity. So because of this even rural areas or remote areas we can use this EVMs efficiently. And next one is the microchip used in this EVM it is a one time programmable mast chip. Okay so whatever the microchip which is used in this EVM it is a one time programmable master chip 
which can neither be read nor overwritten. And furthermore, these AVMs, they are stand-alone machines and there is no operating system used in these machines. So because of this, ECI is challenging that you cannot hack these EVMs because you are just like working as calculators. And if you are talking about this VV pads, so VV pads stand for Voter Verifiable Paper Audit Trail. So it is an independent system. So this system it is attached with EVMs so that it allows the voters to verify whether their votes are casted as their intention or not. Okay. And it was introduced in the by-elections of Noxane Assembly Constituency of Nagaland in 2013. So when this VV pad was introduced in year 2013, that to in Nagaland elections. In 2019 Lok Sabha elections, VV pads they were used in all the constituencies. So from 2019 onwards, we are using this VV pads in all the constituencies. And if you are talking about functionality of this VV pads, so whenever the vote is cast, okay, whenever the vote is cast, a slip is printed which is containing the serial number, name and the symbol of candidate or the political party that will be exposed through a transparent window that too for 7 seconds. After that it will be cut down, it will be falling into the box. Okay, so this mission can be assessed by only polling officers. So these are the some important points that you have to remember from this EVMs and VV patch and there is a high chance of getting question from prelims and as well as mains point of view. Clear? Yes. Now let us move on to our next article. So in the front page itself there is one more important article. Title says firms without profits donated through electoral bonds. So the key word is electoral bonds. Okay, it is about electoral bonds. Now let us see this article in detail. Now let us see the dimensions first. So this is about electoral bonds. So this article is important from your GS paper to under polity and governance. So from governance point of view, we will be studying about different schemes, right? So electoral bond scheme is an example for government related scheme. So I am saying it is from governance point of view. And from polity, you will be reading about political parties. So in this political parties, there is one concept called as funding of political parties. So to make this funding transparent, government came up with this scheme called as electoral bonds. But recently what happened was like, Supreme Court said that this scheme is null and void. So this scheme is unconstitutional. Because there is no transparency. Because the details of the person who is donating to political party is not disclosed. So there is no transparency. Supreme Court said that this scheme is null and void. So here there is a high chance of getting question from this electoral bonds in your prelims like you have to see like what are the provisions of this scheme and you have to see like what is the significance so you should not go to the political things like which party got uh, funds from which people like that we, UPS is not uh, going to ask the question but you will be getting questions from provisions or features of this scheme and also significance or the importance of this scheme. So from this area you can get the question. So it is not from GS1, it is from GS paper 2. Okay and even there is a chance of getting question from political parties because one political party which lost the status of national party 
and even aam aadmi party which got the status of national party so here you have to see like in political parties we have two types national parties and we have state parties and you have to see what is the criteria to meet to get a political party as a national party status and in the same way what is the criteria to be met by political party to be said as state party and what is the role of eci this is also very important what is the role of eci in this context so all these are the dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view yeah now let us move on to next article so here you can see one small article that is about disaster relief funds so title says that in supreme court tamil nadu accuses center of delaying disaster relief funds so what is the keyword keyword here is disaster relief funds okay disaster relief fund so this article is important from your disaster management point of view so let us see the dimensions it is talking about disaster relief fund so why it is in news because tamil nadu state went to supreme court and filed a petition so in this petition it says that central government it no is not releasing funds so first of all you have to know like dimensions what is this disaster relief fund and why we need this disaster relief fund and when we came up with this disaster relief fund next what are the advantages of this fund and you have to see like which states in india they are vulnerable to disasters and you have to see like which are the disasters which are faced by the states and this article is talking about tamil nadu state right so you have to see like what are the disasters that happened in the recent past in tamil nadu for that tamil nadu is asking for the relief of disaster relief fund so all these are very important dimensions okay and this topic is important from gs paper 3 under disaster management and even we can also cover this topic from gs paper 2 under polity okay from central state relations so these are the dimensions and we are going to see this article in detail so why it is in news i already said right tamil nadu went to supreme court accusing that union government or central government is not releasing the funds okay so here union government is treating the people of tamil nadu in a step motherly fashion so this is a statement which is given by tamil nadu chief minister so if you see the details it is talking about national disaster response fund so this national disaster response fund which is defined in section 46 of disaster management act and even one more dimension you have to see is you can also refer about this disaster management act of 2005 it is also very important okay so this national disaster response fund which has been defined in section 46 of disaster management act of 2005 and this disaster response fund it is a fund which is managed by central government and this fund it is mainly helpful to meet the expenses for emergency response relief and rehabilitation due to any threatening disaster situation or any disaster so to address any disaster situation or disaster yes this fund is very helpful for emergency response for example for relief rehabilitation etc this fund is very useful and this ndrf it is constituted to supplement the funds of 
state disaster response fund so in every state so they will be also having this state disaster response fund and apart from that this national disaster response fund it will be supplementing the state's fund and if there is any case of disaster like severe climate related react uh, nation uh, reacted things or weather related actions yes we can use that and actually it is placed in public account of government of india that to under reserved funds not bearing interest so whenever it is placed in this public accounts the government does not require any parliamentary approval to make money or to take money out of this fund so this is very important because if you are talking about the funds we have contingency fund we have consolidated fund of india and we have public accounts so whenever money which is placed in this public account so there is no need of parliamentary approval so this is very important fact that you have to know okay clear and now let us see the next topic so that's all in the front page and the city page in the states page i found nothing important okay nothing much important from your city page or states page most of the articles your political articles that you can see here in this editorial page i found this article very useful because it is talking about india employment report okay so this article is talking about turning the spotlight on the urban poor so this article is talking about india employment report 2024 so this had been released by international labor organization so now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about india employment report india employment report 2024 so here you have to see the dimensions so this article first of all which is very important from your gs paper 3 under economy so here you have to know the first of all the definition of unemployment so what is unemployment you have to see the definition of unemployment and you have to see like types of unemployment for example structural unemployment disguised unemployment frictional unemployment cyclical unemployment so you have to know the de uh, definition as well as difference between these unemployments and you have to see like what are the causes of unemployment in india and you have to see like what are the measures can be taken or else you can also see like what are the schemes so these schemes to present in india which talks about employment opportunities in india and you can also cover one more dimension is about demographic dividend okay you can see about this demographic dividend topic that is also related to this unemployment and you can see like what is the impact of unemployment okay so all these are very important things that you have to see so now let us see this article in detail so recently institute of human development and ilo international labor organization they released a report that is india employment report 2024 so what is the name of that report report title is india employment report 2024 so this report which highlights india's youth continue to grapple with soaring unemployment rates so this report is saying that so indian youth are facing rising levels of unemployment there is very high levels of increasing of unemployment which is seen in india and this is the one important problem which is faced by this indian youth so if you see 
like key highlights the first one is so this report is saying that so there is very poor employment conditions in india so actually you know that a periodic labor force survey report had been released it said that there is increased labor force participation and also some amount very little amount of employment rates but even though here whatever the employment conditions are present in india those conditions they are very poor and even the issues resolving is also not properly taken and the issues are stagnant and or even there are some other issues like declining of wages that is decreasing of wages and there is increasing of self employment among women and higher proportion of unpaid family work among youth so these are the some important problems that are faced by indian youth and apart from this indian youth they accounts for about 83 percentage of unemployed workforce so in unemployed workforce 83 percentage are just youth so you can see like how youth are facing problems and this one is if you are talking about employment challenges for this youth so youth employment and under employment which had been increased between this 2000 to 2019 so now what happened educated youth they are experiencing significantly higher levels of joblessness and even this labor force participation rate worker population ratio and unemployment rate has showed a long term deterioration between 2000 and 2018 but later on we can see a little bit improvement after this 2019 and it's one is because of lack of employment opportunities yes migration is likely to increase even in the future okay the rates of urbanization and migration they are expected to considerably increase in future because of lack of employment opportunities and india is expected to have migration rate of around 40 percentage so migration rate of around 40 percentage in 2030 and will have an urban population of around 607 million and even there is increase in urban growth okay and even we are going to see like increasing of migration pattern okay that is from regional imbalance and even that will also having imbalance on labor markets and that will also lead to the development of slums in this urban areas okay and the direction of mad, uh, migration general in these from like eastern north eastern and central region towards south the nationalist well western and nationalist well northern regions okay so from east north east and central region they are going to migrate to south west or north so if you're talking about this regional disparities significant variations are seen in employment outcomes across the states with certain states they are having like ranking lower in employment indicators so there is very low employment indicator that is seen so because of this some regions you have a good employment but in north we have less and especially some states like bihar up odisha mp jharkhand and chatisgarh they have struggled with poor employment outcomes yes they are having very poor employment outcomes so because of this they are coming up with regional policies and even there will be like increasing of widening of gender gap so india is facing challenge of substantial gender gap in labor market with low rates of female and as well as high rates for men so especially in this labor force participation there is discrimination there is no equal pay is seen so this may further increases the gender gap and next one is the unemployment challenge among young women especially those who are highly educated is enormous so women after they are getting higher education so they are not getting the job opportunities and there is also like social inequalities they persist okay especially with the target policies scheduled caste scheduled tribes they are facing barriers and even they do not have the proper access to this job opportunities as well and next one is let us see like what are the recommendations of this report so this recommend this uh, report is recommending something so if you are implementing this we can address some issues okay at least to certain percent yes first one is to enhance production and to improve the growth with a focus on employment 
so always whenever we are focusing on like development growth we have to focus on even employment and employment related policies and this one is we have to integrate employment creation agenda to macroeconomic policies so whenever government is taking any policies try to focus on improving of employment and even we have to focus on non form employment especially in this manufacturing sector so that we can uh, give support to msmes they are the growth engines and as well as they are like employment opportunity providers and this one is we can prioritize labor intensive manufacturing sector so that this labor intensive manufacturing sector it can absorb like unskilled labor and this one is we can also concentrate on supporting micro small and medium enterprises and we have to focus on increasing of agriculture productivity and we can also generate non form employment opportunities and we can also encourage entrepreneurship and this one is we have to invest in green and blue economies and we have to leverage strategic investments capacity building initiatives policy frameworks to unlock substantial employment potential so these are some important recommendations which are given by this report and i want to give you one main question which already appeared in 2023 try to write an answer for this question question is most of the unemployment in india is structural in nature examine the methodology adopted to compute unemployment in the country and suggest improvements a very simple question try to write an answer for this question for sure and now let us move back to our hindu so that's all you can directly move on to this text and context so in this text and context there is one article that is should state governments borrow more so why because the financial relation between center and state governments it is like a debate now okay so the recent development especially the government of kerala had approved supreme court for the resolution of this question like so how much state government can borrow more okay so because of this this is a news and this topic is related to central state relations and you have to see like the different articles which are focusing on the dividing of funds between center and state okay and even you have to see this topic from physical deficit point of view from economy from gs paper 3 point of view so this are very important so now let us see this article in detail so if you see context it says that in a recent development in a recent development government of kerala approached supreme court for a resolution of following question that is how much can the state government how much can the state government borrow from the market to bridge the excess of its expenditures over receipts okay to bridge the excess of its expenditure over its receipts so if you see the details it says that state government receive funds from three sources so this is very important for your prelims so from where state government are receiving their sources so first one is like own revenues like tax and non tax revenues of the state and the second one is transfer from union government okay and next one is market borrowings so these three are the areas where state governments they can get the revenue or the money so the concept here is debt financed government expenditure they are often exaggerated so every day by day so the expenditure is increasing for the government and the revenue is decreasing so they are going into the debt so economists in this keynesian tradition they shown that government's borrowing can generate a virtuous cycle so if borrowed resources they are deployed effectively to create new incomes and jobs so whenever this keynesian theory is saying that so whenever government state governments are going for borrowing so after borrowing they have to focus on especially creation of or generating of uh, some resources and to provide employment opportunities then that will effectively create new income and as well as jobs so this is the thing which mainly said by this keynesian theory and we have to wait and see what supreme court tells 
and if you move on to this news page leave this uh, election page it is not at all necessary yes here you can see one important article that is nuclear power is the key to development says a study a study says that yes we have to focus on nuclear power if you want to become developed so now let us see this article in detail first of all let us see the dimensions so first of all this article is important from this nuclear energy so here you will be reading your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and from science and technology this topic is important and this year you can expect a question regarding this nuclear energy because fast breeder reactor is in use from Kalapakam uh, nuclear power plant in Tamil Nadu so because of this yes you can get a question from this fast breeder reactors or like types of reactors okay from this types of reactors you can expect a question so here you have to see like what is this nuclear energy okay and you have to see like what is the material that you are using or fissile material and you have to see like types of reactors and you have to see like parts of reactors because from parts of reactors also you got question in your prelims earlier and you have to see like nuclear fusion and what is this nuclear fusion reactions and you have to see like NSG nuclear supply group okay so these are some important dimensions that you have to see and apart from that here you have to see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of this nuclear energy and you have to see like what is India's potential what is India's potential in this nuclear energy so all these are the important dimensions from your both mains and as well prelims point of view so now let us see this article in detail so why it is in news for India to be a developed country by 2047 that is 100 years after we got independence and be on a track to achieve this net zero or carbon neutrality yes for the zero carbon dioxide emissions by 2070 so it must significantly prioritize investments in this nuclear energy and India needs to expand related infrastructure so this is the thing which mainly said in one study recently that study is done by academics at Indian Institute of Management IIM Ahmedabad so if you see here currently nuclear energy makes up only 1.6 percentage of India's energy mix and this report which says that there are high medium and low economic growth scenario okay so that we can improve the push on this nuclear energy so that we can expand okay we can expand this uh, our targets towards this carbon neutrality by 2070 and we can focus on carbon capture we can focus on carbon storage and we can also focus on emphasis we can also improve our emphasis on this renewable energy like solar wind and finally we can come up with the combining of all these and the authors they used mathematical models to establish to estimate like what proportion of various sources of energy would be required by 2030 and 2050 to arrive at an ideal scenario of net zero emissions by 2070 so in this study they used mathematical models so that they estimated like how and what steps we can take to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070 and the best case here is their calculations they were showed like emissions in 2070 they fell to 0.55 billion tons of carbon dioxide okay and these em today's levels are like 30 gigawatts by 2030 and 265 gigawatts by 2050 so these are the things which mainly said and let us see some facts regarding this nuclear energy 
सो न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी इट इज फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फॉर इंडिया इट इज अ फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फॉर इंडिया एंड दिस न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी विच कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट्स अबाउट थ्री परसेंटेज ऑफ टोटल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन इन द कंट्री एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस सो इंडिया हैज ओवर ट्वेंटी टू न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर्स एंड वी हैव सेवन न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री एंड वॉट इज द कैपेसिटी ऑफ सिक्स थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड एटी मेगा वॉट्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पावर सो आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू वन मेन्स क्वेश्चन दैट इज विथ ग्रोइंग एनर्जी नीड्स should india keep on expanding its nuclear energy program discuss the facts and fears associated with this nuclear energy so try to write an answer for this question and these are very important topics that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so that's it nothing more nothing less and i want to show you like where can you get the notes of this class so this is our rathod's is classes telegram channel so you can join this so that you can get the updates of the classes and even you can get the notes and next one is this is our rathod's is academy youtube channel so do subscribe to this channel because we are providing lots and lots of informative videos like daily current affairs analysis and important topics for 2024 and previous questions analysis okay so that this will be very helpful to reach your goal Okay, we are simplifying your preparation process. And next one is this is our website, Rathod's IS Academy website. If you want to purchase online course, yes, you can use this website for sure. And the online foundation course price is twenty thousand rupees, and you will be getting the combination of recorded plus live classes. Okay, do join this online course so that you will be having the validity of two years, and there will be main science writing practice. and prelims test series prelims booster course everything is included even in this online also so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture if you really like this class please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the startup science academy and please do share this video with your friends thank you so much for watching